The only negative that we got, or one of the major negatives we got, which was interesting, you know, people, we first blog went out there and they were timing us, how quickly would we respond to comments. And there was one person who just kept entering blog entry after blog entry on her blog, and we're like, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. So it was great. People were watching and people were testing us. And, uh, you know, that's what happens, obviously, when you first launch it. So you have to sort of make people understand, you know, the senior executives, it's not always going to be like this. And I can tell you it won't. Uh, but clearly, you know, I'm in the PR department, so what we wanted was we wanted good publicity. And that's exactly what we got. We did not use outside consultants other than the vendor for the back end. We didn't use a PR agency. We didn't market it. A uh, reporter for the Washington Post overheard in a conversation, Mr. Marriott kind of spilled the beans, that we were going to do a blog. We didn't do a press release. He wrote a story about it. We've never done a press release on the blog. It's been completely organic, totally organic. So it's been exactly what, it, the publicity is exactly what we wanted because it's not supposed to be a commercial blog or else, you know, you sort of, you lose what we call the authenticity, which is something we're always trying to make sure we have. And then the other thing, obviously, anything online influences traditional media offline, which is, you know, typically uh, things that boomers read, newspapers and, and, uh, and the like. So this was the uh, Washington Post story. It really talks about how this also fits into what we're trying to do globally in terms of our image. Next slide. And then this is USA Today. We, for some reason, did not save the actual USA Today story. So this was the online version um, of it. So again, we got you know, two national newspapers, which was absolutely terrific. And there's been a ton of coverage since then because of the novelty of Mr. Marriott blogging. Next slide. And then in terms of comments, I think this is what people always worry about, is what are people going to say? And you know, again, the comments have been unbelievably positive and remain unbelievably positive. In the beginning, we actually, you know, were saying, please, somebody send in a negative comment. <laughs> I mean, it was lit, and, and we were, I remember like running to Kathleen Matthews, we got one, we got a negative one and we could post it. I did have a few up here and they can be pretty vicious. We do post negative comments. We do it within the parameters of the terms of use that we've set up. This is not the complaint line if you had a bad trip. This is not the HR complaint line. Those get funneled elsewhere. It has to be relevant to the conversation. It has to be relevant to what we're trying to accomplish and to the blog. If it's not, we don't post it. We say it right up front. People, have to understand, people understand that. But again, people want to talk to us, particularly you know, in your case, and you've got agencies that, like our company, can appear to be monolithic. This is a great way to customize and personalize the experience for uh, your clients. So these are just example. The last one is the one I love because it's perfect. There was a, uh, well, a couple of things. There is actually a negative here. We got a negative, and we did this on purpose. We did a blog about banning smoking in our hotels. You can't smoke in this hotel. You can't smoke in any of our hotels in the US and Canada, uh, anywhere in the hotels. You only smoke outside. So that elicited a lot of back and forth. So we published comments like, I'm never going to stay at your hotel ever again. But then other people say, I will only stay at your hotel. And then we got people commenting on the comments. It was like, yeah, this is what it's all about. I mean, we're in overdrive right now. The bottom one was we uh, introduced a new uh, guest room for one of our lesser known brands, Spring Hill Suites. And it's really um, a departure from anything we've ever done. And people were writing back and forth. And one person just trashed it. And I love this one from the Gen Xer. I'm a Gen Xer as well. And it's about that guest room down to my tattoos and piercings, and I disagree with the last comment. I like that the room looks like a toy. It's fun and it's mod. I think it has a relaxed, unpretentious feeling. It's clean, it's fresh and colorful. I'd be happy to stay in such a room. Sarah doesn't work for Marriott, but that was what it was all about. I saw that, I love that comment. Next slide, please. So basically, where are we today? And this is as of about a week ago. Um, we've had more than 100,000 uh, visits and this is, I'm not a tech person, so visits and uh, sessions and unique visits and things like that, it all gets to be mumbo jumbo, but we've had, we've had more than 150,000 actual sessions. We've had 100,000, these are unique visits uh, on Marriott, uh, what we call Married on the Move, the official name of the blog, to date. 38% of the people visiting the blog now go directly to it, which is a pretty high figure, 26% from search engines. About 25% also go from Marriott.com. There's a link. And also, that was a key component, actually, was Marriott.com. Marriott.com gets about 500,000 visitors a month. And that was the biggest advertising that we did, uh, was taking advantage of that. 
A surprise to us was 26% of the blog visitors are from outside the United States. We're a global company. We did not expect it to be this high. And so that's what's so wonderful uh, about this, which makes us wonder. In one of our properties, something happened. We had a, a bombing occurred near one of our hotels in Islamabad. And Mr. Marriott blogged about it. A, a security guard was unfortunately killed. And the blog published in English uh, appears you know, globally. And in China, one of our hotels, a, a associate published that or printed that blog out and translated it and posted it up on the bulletin board for other associates. So the reach has just been absolutely incredible. Uh, we've had nearly 4,000 reservations booked. We have a link from the blog back to Marriott.com. That was a shock to us. We did not expect this. The revenue has been about $1.5 million. So uh, quite a surprise to us to have uh, that number of reservations booked after they've uh, been to the blog. And then we've uh, been able to uh, generate 300 media uh, Marriott rewards enrollments, and that's our frequent travel program. So for a publicly traded company uh, where the bottom line matters, these are numbers and metrics that the bosses like to see. Next. So in terms of our future plans, internal blogging. Um, we launched our first internal blog yesterday. Not surprisingly, it's the IT department. We'll launch additional internal blogs throughout the summer, and we're test piloting them. I will be honest with you, I think you know, external blogs definitely have a purpose, but I think it's kind of limited in terms of our, uh, our, uh, our business in hotels. Internal blogs is really, to me, the future and where it's at, and I know that um, our next speakers, two speakers, will talk a lot about that. But we are moving aggressively into that. And as I said, there are a lot of people within Marriott. They want to launch internal blogs. For tech folks, the way we're doing this, basically, is we have an intranet. So you need you know, a login and a password. So it's behind a firewall. You have, to, you, know, you have to be a Marriott associate, or you have to be an associate of one of our franchise companies to be able to actually read any of these blogs. So that's the way that we're setting it up. But the key here is it's the exchange of information. Email is a one, can be a one-way exchange. If you send out a group email, as you know, if people start replying to each other separately, you lose the art of conversation. So this is a great way to tap into all the resources that are out there you know, thousands of miles away and build up ideas from the ground up. And it's also a great way for corporate to communicate with the folks out in the field who may feel a little bit detached and that we operate perhaps a little bit too much in silos. So that's our next big push. Uh, we have with our contractor uh, a contract for up to 100 blogs. So we're now using two. We have 98 to go. So we're very committed to this. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we've had to do, and you know, clearly this is where the legal folks get in, but it's updating corporate policies. Uh, we do have rules that say you have to get approval to blog from our EVP or the EVP from marketing. Well, people break the rules. There are hotel, there are properties and regions that already have created blogs, so they've gone around the rules. So we have begun to streamline the corporate policies to take in new media as well as to publicize it within the company. Uh, because basically, we either have to get out in front of this train or it's going to run us over. And that's what we recognize and that's what we're educating um, senior executives about as well, too. And then basically, we're looking at, you know, after the integration of blogs, wikis, podcasting, more social media. Um, and we're looking at what we call user-generated content as well, too, and the applicability of that. Uh, working on a project with our Courtyard brand that hopefully will kick off in a couple of months in which we are repositioning that brand. And we want the story to be told by the uh, actual people who are part of the research and our Courtyard customers. So it's an exciting world out there for us and a very new world for us. And I'm just happy that I've been able to sort of share a little bit about our experiences getting blogging up and running. And I look forward to taking any of your questions at the end. Thank you so much.